Let's bring in Joe Douglas because, you know, we've got our transmission problems worked out. Joe, how you doing? I'm good, guys. How you guys doing? I'm glad we just, there's a call drop there. I'm glad that didn't happen over the weekend. So. Yeah, we were just saying. I mean, there's 32 teams, all these drafts, and nothing dropped. And you come on our show and it dropped. I, I mean, that might tell Here us what you go. think I of us. I must have jinxed it. I must have <laughs> jinxed it. Sorry, guys. So let's go with that. Before we get into your picks, I like the way the draft looked. I love the families. I love being inside the living room and the think tank of where the GMs are making the decisions. I love the player. What did you What did you feel about the way it came down? You know, I'll tell you, just from the beginning, we, you know, when we uh, when we moved to our home offices, there was a couple of days of just, you know, just there's a little uncomfortable uh, period there. Once we got into the swing, you know, I mentioned it on my press conference. I mean, our IT staff did a phenomenal job of getting our personnel guys and our coaches all on the same, same page with Microsoft Teams. It really helped us through our process. I mean, I don't think we missed a beat. Um, then we got into the actual draft. I think we we uh, we did a mock draft with the league leading up to the draft. Uh, we did three or four dry runs with our group on Microsoft Teams. We were ready, and so uh, once we once we uh, got into the the flow of the draft, you're going, and, it, and it's very similar to it's very similar to how the flow of the draft would be in a facility. Um, and you can have the one-off conversations that you need to within Microsoft Teams. You know, if you if you just want to, you know, go over one or two different scenarios real quick. Uh, but the coolest part was the family aspect, and it didn't hit me until after we drafted Makai, you know, and then, you know, my daughter and son come in and, you know, they give you a big hug, and it's like, wow, man, this is really cool. This is something that normally wouldn't happen at the facility, and that they can be a part of this. And uh, that, that, that was probably the, the best thing about the weekend. I, I, I Practice. I want to just jump in with one thing. In the mock draft that you guys did to practice to see if all the moving parts actually worked, did you guys actually select real players? Did anybody tip their hands, or were you just saying Joe Slobotnik from Auburn? So there was a script. There oh, okay. Was a script. There was a script where the top, the top half of the draft, each team in the top half of the draft had to do a trade with the team in the bottom half of the draft. So we were linked with the Seattle Seahawks. So we traded out of 11 with, with the Seahawks uh, down to, I believe they were uh, 20, 27 or 28, and we, we, 27, and then we had to actually, so then we had to wait to be back on the clock and pick 27 to turn our, and you had each player that you were assigned a player. So there was really, okay. it, it, was just, mm. it was just scripted. Was there any surprises through the first 10 picks as you prepared for 11? You know, I think I think where we were um, with with all the scenarios that we had in strategy meeting, you know, we um, we had prepared. Uh, okay, this is what we're going to do if uh, all the tackles are going to go. Uh, so we had we had basically uh, prepared for worst case scenario. So I think um, once we got to once we got to Arizona's pick, um, and they and they they picked the. Uh, the hybrid safety linebacker um, was like, okay, one, one of our guys is going to be here. Um, and it just so happened that uh, they saw the perfect guy for us in Mackay. Um, how late does that decision get made? Like, it, it, was there any world in which this could have gone wide receiver instead a few days earlier? Um, or were you pretty set on this for a little while? No, you know, we had, so we had the meetings with the coaches and it was great. Uh, we had we had our draft meetings with the coaches uh, the week prior uh, to draft week, and so uh, our first strategy meetings were Sunday afternoon, and we had three uh, three strategy meetings. We went over as many different scenarios as we could. Um, you know, we had we had player comparisons, and um, you know we 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 talked any any difference of opinion we hashed it out. We talked it through, and uh, you know the importance of that was okay. We're making these decisions under calm time so you know that we can just execute the game plan under duress you know if, if we're down to you know uh five minutes on the clock and you're waiting for a trade the trade call doesn't come in look we've had this, this discussion already but we're not going to change it now that there's a little bit more perceived pressure all right so if i've seen any kind of criticism joe of the draft by the jets is that going in you said you want a protection for sam and weapons and you know, some people say they didn't take enough wide receivers. You got Denzel Mims uh, late in the second round, and you also got a running back out of Florida, LaMichael Perrine. 
Is that enough weapons? Do you think you have enough weapons for Sam this year? Yeah, you know, that was that was the emphasis going in. You know, and I think, um, you know, when we were at 48, um, you know, we had an opportunity to where we had a, we had a strong pool of players to choose from. And, um, you know, there was, there was a lot of sweating going on when we moved back to 59. We felt that we felt that we had, a, we still had an opportunity to get a great player. Uh, and it felt perfectly to get Mims. Um, you know, in other instances where we had a, we had a pool of players, um, and there were wide outs, there were wide outs in part of that pool. But again, I go back to the, the, the discussions that we had prior to the draft and in, in those discussions, you know, we had, we had the player comparisons. Um, so really we just executed the game plan and we went best player available. So are you uh, disappointed you didn't get more wide receivers? No, I wouldn't say that at all. Um, mm-hmm. I'd say we're excited about Denzel. I think he's got a real opportunity to come in and compete. I think well, Michael, I think, uh, I think what goes on said about him Actually, I don't even know what's being said about him outside of our building. But I think the exciting thing about him is what he brings, not only as a running back, but as a weapon in the pass game. Um, I think he's, he has real ability as a route runner. I think he has really good ball skills. Uh, and I think he's excellent in pass protection. So I think uh, those, those are two exciting weapons that we're able to add to our team through the draft. You know, you weren't here, but like the history of the Jets, whether it's Braylon mm-hmm. Edwards, Plexico Burris, Antonio Holmes, they've been able to acquire – wide receivers you just saw one of the best wide receivers in the nfl uh get uh get dealt during this off season are you comfortable with that you there are other ways besides the draft to acquire that difference maker at the wide receiver position right and, and um we've talked about that before there's there's many many different avenues to uh to acquire talent, you know, the, the draft and free agency are, are two of the more highlighted avenues. But uh, obviously, trades. I mean, last year, um, last year we we made a trade with the Patriots to acquire Demarius Thomas. So um, you know, we, we're going to be aggressive. If there's an opportunity for us to upgrade any position, you know, we'll we will attack that. Now, you you don't think you guys could have sent a better haul for DeAndre Hopkins? <laughs> it seems like that's the kind of dude who could completely change a team, and he and he basically got traded for a dollar and some envelopes. Was that a, a conversation that other teams were able to have, or was this just a Bill O'Brien rush job? Um, you know, the, there's discussions that you have with every team. Um, I'm not sure how many teams that uh, that Houston uh, discussed uh, regarding DeAndre. Uh, I, I can say we didn't have a, a ton of discussions uh, with the Texans, but is that yeah, frustrating when something like that happens? When you see that someone that talented uh, who could? No, it's, it's not. I mean, obviously Houston had a target uh, that they they were they were being aggressive with, and uh, you know they 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 executed the deal. And, um, look, Bill, Bill's going to do what he feels is best for his team. All right, now since the trades already happened, I can ask you this now: Did you guys ever engage the Redskins for Trent Williams? And if you had. Would you have used the 11 pick on a wide receiver? Yeah, so th- there were there were look w- w- there's discussions with a lot of teams. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, you know there were there were feelers. Um, nothing nothing was ever serious when it came to talk talks with the Washington Redskins. That, without getting into specifics, I can tell you that that nothing ever really got serious. Was it strange to make a deal with the Patriots? This is the second trade. That, yeah, uh, you got some cubes, man. <laughs> um, no, honestly, I think both of those cases, uh, we felt strongly that uh, those deals helped the team. So it wasn't it wasn't a matter of hey, it's the Patriots or hey, it's this team. It's uh, this is an opportunity that we we feel can help our team. You also took um, Ashton Davis. A, a lot of people like that pick, but you do have a lot of safeties now. So how, how's that going to work? Or is that a, a guard against? Adams or May leaving at some point? No, it, it, for for Ashton, it, it was it was a player that everyone in our our organization was really excited about. Uh, I think you need to have a certain level of versatility and flexibility within your defensive backfield. Uh, I think I think our back seven uh, can be if, if we the more the more versatility that, that we can add in, in our back seven, the better. And I think Ashton is a guy. Uh, with great speed, with great range, with great ball skills, uh, excellent character and competitiveness, ma- competitive makeup. I think he has a chance to be a real, real asset in a variety of roles for us. I, 
I noticed, Joe, that toward the end of the draft, I believe five of the last seven guys you took were captains on their college team. Why is that important to you? Mm. You know, I think it's it's the way that our rankings fell. Um, I think when we're talking about trying to build the right culture and having the right locker room, uh, I think that requ- requires the right kind of leadership. And so I think I think these guys were the right combination of talent and character, uh, guys that, that to bring into the organization. Now, you, you have your first draft. Is this enough now where you can look at this and say, this is my team, this is, this is the way I want it to look, or does it still take a little bit more time and a little bit more pieces to feel like this is no longer Mike McCagnin's team, this is now Joe Douglas's team? Uh, you know, I, I honestly, I don't think about it as Mike's team versus my team. This is our team, and you know, we're 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 trying to we're trying to 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 really build a foundation of the right type of people moving forward. And I think we're all in this together. I think that was the best part about our process is that everyone had a voice. Uh, everyone came together, and we've got a lot of work to do still. I mean, um, this this was this was a, a you know, time will tell uh, how this draft stacks up. Uh, we were able to add nine guys. And then um, even, you know, when you look at the totality of the draft for us, um, you know, having, you know, you, being able to use pick to 11 for Nate Hairston and Quincy Wilson, and then being able to use our seventh round pick to add a guy like Alex Lewis, uh, who's able to contribute and glad that we had him back. You know, when we look at, at this, at these draft picks as a whole, uh, it, we, we hope it can be uh, uh, a draft that can springboard us. All right, truth serum time. Joe Douglas, Jet GM, is with us. So you were with Philadelphia. When they used their second-round pick for a quarterback when they have Carson Wentz, did you kind of stop and go, whoa, what's that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Jalen Hurts is a, is a, is a outstanding player. Uh, had an excellent career at Alabama. Uh, did a really nice job his last year in Oklahoma. Um, you know, without being part of that process, I really don't want to com- comment on it. Okay. Um, no, but being around, you know, knowing knowing the type of competitor that Jalen is, he'll fit great uh, in a room that has uh, uh, the type of competitor that Carson is. I mean, there's there's going to be um, there's going to be a lot of passion and fire. Now, obviously, um, you took a little bit of a project quarterback later in the draft. Are you okay, Joe, with the backups for Sam going in? Or are you going to look for a veteran? I think we have a good mix of, of players right now. Um, excuse me. We have you know, David Bale resigned him. You know, he's been he's been in the system for a long time. Um, you know, really smart um, and, a, and a great a, a great person to have in the room. Uh, brought in Mike White, uh, who was uh, who was on our practice squad at the end of last year, and he's got a lot of ability to develop. And then uh, another guy talk about you know how excited people were for uh ashton um there was there was a ton of excitement uh for for captain morgan as i call him he's a uh he's a a, a real he brings a lot of energy brings a lot of juice um you know he, he, he when he came into our combine interview i mean he lit up the room his recall is his football smarts and then you watch the tape you see the, you see the size you see the arm talent you see a lot of tools to develop, so excited to have him in the room. With Joe, we're start. I'm sorry, Joe. We're starting no, to excited, see. Excited to have him in the room with Sam. We're starting to see, a, a, maybe the possibility, within a couple of weeks of things kind of loosening up, with the pandemic. Do you have any date, any discussion with the NFL on when you may be able? to allow players to come to your facility and, and be able to start workouts and start thinking about this upcoming season? You know, obviously we're hopeful that uh, we can get in some point soon. I think on my end uh, right now, there's still uncertainty, uh, nothing, nothing set in stone, but uh, we're, we're hoping that we can, we can get back in the building soon. Now I know that great organizations plan everything down to the nth degree. Did you guys make sure that Adams' children wore a Jamal Adams jersey and a Le'Veon Bell jersey just to send out good vibes? <laughs> you know, I, I think that's a that's a good question for uh, for Coach <laughs> Gates. We didn't talk about what our what our children were going to be wearing uh, throughout the draft, but uh, I, I guess there was. Adam told me there was a shot. Uh, I guess it, it was trending uh, on his son. You know, and w- on one shot he was working on a Rubik's cube, and then the next shot, shot it was solved. So you know, we got a 
Was that legitimate, Joe? Did he really solve? I, I couldn't solve a Rubik's cube for four years if I had it. He did it in about a half hour. I still have, still have never signed a Rubik's cube. You know, you know what I had to do as a kid? I cheated. I took the stickers off and put them. Put of them on. course, that's, See, what, that's what real people do. But then it looks it looks terrible because you never put the <laughs> you couldn't even on. put the stickers no. on well. <laughs> I couldn't even put the stickers on right. So no, I mean knowing how smart Adam and his and his kids are, no, no, I'm not surprised at all. Now, you picked up the fifth-year option on Jamal, which I guess was expected. Uh, how's that going? Are you going to talk with him about an extension shortly? Yeah, so uh, pick, picking up the option, I mean, we, 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 of course, we were going to do that um, and excited to do it. Uh, talked at length about, you know, um, how excited we are to have Jamal and how, how good of a player he is. But, uh, you know, we we will at some point get to get together with him and his representatives uh, once we tie up everything uh, on our end from the draft. And you're cool that he's not. I know it's voluntary, and that's the key word. You, you're cool that he's not taking part in the voluntary uh, computer workouts. I guess virtual workouts. Yeah, so we're doing virtual classes, and it, it was uh, it was cool because those started today. I was able to sit in on a, on a few positions and just. Uh, Watch the assistant coaches do your, do their thing, which was uh, really uh, really good to see. Uh, but yeah, these, these are voluntary. These are voluntary. All right, cool. We thank you for coming on. Did you, I mean I, I, one last thing? Do you have any fun? It, I, it, I mean, there's so much riding on it. Is it fun at all? It is. Are you kidding? It's it's unbelievable fun. And that's really thing, like I, you try to you try to keep you try to keep the guys loose. I mean, this is. I know this is big business, and you got to have fun. You got to have fun doing this, and I think that was, that was the that was the best part because we we have such a good group of scouts, and I think we were we were really able to have fun and build a really really strong chemistry. And, you know the meetings that we had leading up uh, to the draft, and you know guys are standing on the table for their for the guys that they really want on the team, and you know we're we're having fun, we're laughing, we're we're we're, uh, you know, we're cracking jokes on each other. Um, you know, we're, we're trying, you know, loose is fast and we're trying to stay loose and have fun um, while at the same time making sure our, our eyes are dotted and T's are crossed. Good stuff. Stay safe, you and your family, and hopefully we'll talk soon. You too, guys. Thanks for the time. All right. Thanks, Thanks Joe Douglas. Thanks, Joe. You know, he 